Yeah, so the Galente, you have an organization known as the Cultural Deliverance Society that try to help deal with the unrest that is happening in Caldari Prime because, you know, they got moved from the Stone Age to the Industrial Era in, like, a decade. Um, and then from this, like, blending of Caldari uh, authoritarianism and Galente free market ideals comes Isu Isuaya, the first Caldari corporation, which would later become Asuaya Tactical Merc Group um, and would, you know, kind of be a precursor to the rise of what we know as the modern mega corporation. Um, the very first warp drive was built by a Caldari in 22821, um, which was about, looks like, 12 years after their first contact with the Manar and, you know, 10 years before or after or 15 years before that, they made contact with the Antaki. Um, and then the Federation was founded in 23121, which if you again, if you read the story, it really does play out as like. The Galente are incredibly manipulative. I'll put it that way. Um Here we go. Um, I think actually this entire thing I skipped. I think I skipped this part in the actual video because it doesn't. It isn't relevant to the drifters. Am I who are? I I, I cannibalized this script for the who are the drifters uh, script, but I think I just left out the Caldari Galente uh, side. So I can just read it right now. If you want. Uh, so. The Amara Mimitar were not the only ones to emerge out of the Dark Ages. Hundreds of light years away, the Manar and Athra, from Manar and Athra, the system of VH451 was showing a lot of promise. In 17, or 7989, fully 8,000 years before the crowning of the first emperor of Amar, two of the planets of VH451 were purchased and colonized. A small French group from Tau Ceti began occupying the sixth planet of the system with the last con colony ship arriving in 852, only nine years prior to the Eve Gate's collapse. The seventh planet was purchased by a mega corporation, well, by mega corporations that began establishing subterranean colonies and terraforming the planet to make the air breathable. While most of the original settlements had perished by the year 8100, the automatic terraforming completed successfully by 8307, rendering the planet hospitable. It would take over eight millennia for actual civilization to return to the planet. It would take another hundred years for the rise of the Rata Empire in 17453 AD. Three and a half millennia after its formation, the Rada Empire collapsed into a myriad of city-states across the four major continents of the seventh planet. Another millennia and a half would pass before the next major event for the people of the planet seven, first contact with planet six. 600 years after the collapse of the Rada Empire on the forgotten sixth planet of Galantia, the Age of Ancients was ended by the Ravanor family unifying the largest continent and establishing the Garun Empire. In the year 21714 AD, the then Lord of the Garun Empire, Duol Dos Ravanor III, established a new calendar. This represents one of several splits in how time is tracked in New Eden. According to the Garun calendar, it is currently roughly 1,990 AR, Age of Ravanor. While this is generally not used outside of the Galente people, and con conversion is particularly difficult thanks to an AR year being 1.21 of the standard calendar equivalent. Let me fucking tell you about that, man. Holy crap. While I was writing this, I stumbled upon this fact and I was trying to make all the calendars match up and finding out that their calendar year is 21% longer than a normal calendar year and therefore you can't just one-to-one -one do the math. And what sucks is that I like, I even, I remember contacted, contacting Jules, uh, Julius Soder, like one of the leading dudes in Galente and I was like, can you explain to me the AR calendar. And he's like, I don't know anything about it. I'm like, God damn it. Yes, I said Ravenar. Anywho. Sorry. Side rants aside. Uh, and conversion to it is particularly difficult thanks to AR using uh, being 1.21 uh, of the standard calendar equivalent. It still stands as a pretty useful trivia within the bars and pleasure hubs in New Eden. Which is, by the way... All I get to say about it, because I had this whole thing where I was trying to like keep the calendars together, and then I just totally gave up. Totally gave up. However, much like the Rata Empire, the Gorun Empire was doomed to fail. By the year 21834, the Empire had collapsed. 
but left with it a population spurred on by technological development and progressive thinking. It took over 600 years for the now democratized republic to enter into the information age, and upon doing so discovered that their neighboring planet was not only also inhabited, but they had recently entered their own industrial revolution. The denizens of the more technologically advanced Galente were motivated to make first contact and reunite with their lost brothers on the planet that they knew as Cephalon. They formed an international space cooperative and committed their entire planet to the effort of taking the space and reuniting their people. Those on Cephalon, for their part, were cooperative, going so far as to use their media sent via the probe, via probe by their neighbor to learn the language prior to the landing of the ISCSS Venture, which touched down nearby to what is now known as the city of Arcurio then occupied by the new Oriani Collective. The Collective assisted the crew of the venture with establishing a communication link back to the home planet. And the Prime Minister of New Oriani asked the ISC captain of the Collective name for the people of her homeworld. She replied with Galente, derived from Galantia, which in turn was the Guru name for the planet. This was the first recorded use of the term Galente. Likewise, the Galente learned that the local name for the seventh planet, Haldari, the Caldari were more efficient bureaucratic authoritarian. Sorry, the Caldari's more efficient bureaucratic authoritarian style allowed them to quickly catch up with the Galente, and soon they were working together to terraform the local planets. The cultural upheaval spurred on by technological advancement beyond measure led to civic unrest on Caldari. The Galente noticed this and so formed the Cultural Deliverance Society to help with humanitarian and cultural efforts. The free thinking of the Galente mixed with the pragmatic authoritarianism of the Caldari, and corporate capitalism was born. Punctuated by the creation of the Isuota Isuiat Corporation, while it was while it has since been subsumed into other modern megacorps, the branch known as Asuya Tactical has lived on as a mercenary and security agency into the modern age. One by one, the regimes of the Caldari fell, often with the support of the CDS, and gave way to the loosest attempts of democracy. What came from this was rising xenophobia, overall reluctance to accept Galente culture. Increasingly, the failing puppet states defaulted to day-to-day -day governance to a collection of megacorporations that had more or less functioned as the stand-in government. These megacorporations and the Caldari as a whole saw themselves as separate and distinct from the rest of the Proto-Federation and maintained cultural purity from them. In just over 70 years, the uni Union of the Galente and Caldari had constructed their first Stargate and renamed their system Luminaire. Together they had finally reached the stars, but by this time the uneven nature and growing, of the growing partnership was beginning to begin, be noticed by the Caldari. The much more populous Galente having near absolute control of decisions over the less populated Caldari. The mega corporations were upset by the unequal treatment by the Galente and thus felt that they were not beholden to the ISC, and so began secretly expanding into uncharted territory. Around 200 years later, from Luminaire ran in, uh, sorry, around 200 years later, those from Luminaire ran into contact with two other groups, first the Antaki and then the Manar. Neither of these two civilizations had entered into the industrial era, and the ISC did not have the authority to uplift them. Soon, the Organization for Flan Foreign Planetary Development was born out of the now defunct Cultural De Deliverance Society. While the Antaki organized relatively well into the Antaki Assembly, the Galente had only provided technology to those outside of the dominant empire on Manar, leading to the Raspa Wars. The first warp drive, the Sota, sorry, the Sodio Urbata drive, was created to allow Luminaire to lend support to their distant allies. With this new technology came the new ability to reach out to distant stars and look for lost civilizations. And with this conflict came, and with this conflict came another agency, the Galente Unified Defense Command to serve as a naval force for the allied planet. So, please note, yeah, sure, the Antaki assimilated just fine, but the principal leadership of the planet of Manar resisted the Galente, so they funded and fueled the uh, rebellions on the, na uh, on the planet until that empire collapsed and they were able to install a more favorable group, allowing them to bring them into their collective. Much like the Cultural Deliverance Society took down the regimes that controlled uh, the, the state prior. So that's what I mean by like, the Galente are not pure. 
they're they're very uh, they consume culture. Uh, thus, the Golden Age for the Galente and their allies began. Many used warp drives to colonize the distant region of Verge, now known as Verge Vendor, and several other lost civilizations, far too primitive or too small to maintain their identity, were brought into the Galente people. So, we don't know how many societies were brought into the Galente. Any group that didn't have enough cultural identity to maintain their own, like, so, like identity outside of just the collective has been completely lost to time. They've completely obliterated those cultures. Um, champions of, sorry. And several other lost civilizations, far too primitive or too small to maintain their identity, were brought into the Galente people, champions of justice and democracy. And together, they connected the stars. Eventually, trade was established and facilitated by yet another organization. This time, the Multi-World Agreement on Trade was formed to regulate interplanetary trade. Soon, these four organizations, the ISC, the OFPD, the UDC, and the MWAT, became overly burdensome, and it was agreed that a collective government would be established. The Federated Unit Union of Galente Prime, or the Federation as it was called, was formed in June of 23-121 AD, or 1702 AR, for those keeping However, the young federation quickly, however, the young federation quickly ran into trouble. The Menar rapidly expanded into the region of every shore, causing claim disputes within the member states. Thankfully, the, the invention of the FTL communication by Glente scientist Lee Asbel helped facilitate diplomacy in many of these disputes, but the cultural differences of the Kaldari continued to fester. By this time, the mega corporations had all but taken over Kaldari using the wealth gained in their secret colonies to become more powerful than the puppets that ran the government. However, when the CEO of the Kalikota Corporation, Matsa Sobaski, spoke out against the Galente, attempt, uh, the Galente attempt to assume the Kaldari identity, cries of sedition led to an investigation, an investigation which uncovered the long secret colonies. The Senate launched into an emergency summit to discuss the ongoing situation and demanded the mega corporations hand over their col colonies and ultimately impose sanctions upon the rebellious Kaldari. The CEOs of the top eight mega corporations formed the chief executive panel and announced independence from the Federation and secured the space lanes between Kaldari Prime and their distant colonies. The Federation in turn blockaded Kaldari Prime and attempted to force the rogue state to capitulate. Fanatical nationalism was growing in both. Cal Galente and Caldari Prime, and while some may have been interested in a diplomatic solution, a terrorist attack sealed the fate of these two people. The Galente had constructed cities and massive underwater domes on Caldari Prime in an attempt to better relate to their sister planet. These had long since become a point of chafing by the Caldari, and in 23155 AD, 34 years after the formation of the Federation, the city of Novel Ravenor's protective dome was sabotaged by explosives. The fanatical Caldari, known as the Templus Dragonar, a group that would go on to be the secret army of the Kaldari leader Tybus Heth and survive in one form or another to this day, ultimately were blamed in this event. The destruction of Novel Revenor killed nearly all of the million, half million residents and secured the path for war. Being overcome by nationalists, over nationalists at this point, the Federation responded by bombarding Kaldari Prime from orbit. War had come for the Federation. 